What is your most embarrassing poop story? I'll go first. I was working at a furniture rental store making deliveries and we had to deliver this large, heavy, sectional living room set. At the time my diet consisted of greasier food than most people's. I have since changed. I am now about half the man I used to be, and had been stopped up for about four days for some reason. So we get to the customer's home and start the delivery. We wrestle the couch up the stairs and into the living room and set it up. The customer then decided she wanted the couch to face the other way so we unhook the parts of the couch and bend down to pick it up and turn it around. At that moment it all comes out with the biggest wettest sounding fart you had ever heard. A surge of brown greasy goo slides out of me and into my pants and all I can do is run out the door. The look on the customer's face was the purest form of WTF I had ever seen. No throwaway account because I'm a man. I began the day an average employee of a Fortune 500 company in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. By 6 p.m., I was wandering Times Square, bathed in my own shit, with no way to get across the Hudson River to my home in Jersey. Let's go back to the beginning. I wasn't feeling all that well, but went to work anyway that morning. I almost made it through the day. As I was finishing up, my stomach started to churn, and I headed for the restroom. I made it into a stall, fade to black. Next thing I know... I woke up on my knees, my head against the inside wall of the stall, feeling like I'd slept for hours. It was probably only about 30 seconds since I passed out. After briefly passing out a second time, I stood up to assess my situation. Sweat was pouring off my forehead, and there was a puddle of shit forming on the floor. I knew right away that the poop had run down my leg into my sock and shoe and out onto the floor. Panic, I had no friends or relatives in the city. How the hell was I going to get out of this? I took off my befouled pants and underwear and hung them up on the hook. It was at this point that I realized how truly putrid it all smelled, and people were coming and going from the bathroom outside my stall. I'm sure they were horrified by the smell. First, I tried to clean up the pool of brown liquid from the floor. The toilet paper dispenser would only release a few sheets at a time. It took me at least 10 minutes. Then I tried to rinse out my underwear in the toilet. God only knows what horrifying stew of bacterial I was putting my hands into. I couldn't get them clean, so I threw them in the trash. I wiped down my pants as best I could, waited till the bathroom was empty, washed my hands, and headed out of the bathroom. I was still leaving little drops of poop on the floor all the way to the elevator. The elevator. Oh my god. I couldn't get in an enclosed space with other people. I asked a security guard if I could take the steps, because I spilled something on my clothes and smelled bad. He could immediately smell that I had shit myself. He told everyone waiting for elevators to step aside, and let me take one down alone. I felt a touch of relief to be out of the building, but the relief was short-lived. I had to take the subway to the Port Authority. Everyone could smell my stench and quickly moved away from me. I got off the subway at Times Square, and realized I would never be able to get on a bus. With my horrifying stench, my first thought, go to the drugstore and buy some Fabrice and bathe in it. But as soon as I walked into the store, I heard oh my god, what is the smell, really loud, from an alarmed woman. I quickly made my exit without the Fabrice. Next I thought, I have to buy a new pair of pants. Problem, I wear large sizes that aren't easily found. The best I could do was a pair of NY Mets swimming trunks. I went into a public restroom, took off my pants, then realized that my legs still were covered in poop wetness. Again I used a toilet to bathe my legs, but I couldn't get the stink off, oh, and the swim trunks didn't fit. Next thought, I would offer Cabby $100 to drive me through the Lincoln Tunnel. I flagged one down, and explained that I had an accident and would pay him $100 to drive me the mile or two to Jersey. He quickly rolled up his window and sped away. My brother-in-law lived in Jersey. I called him. No answer. I sat on the steps outside the Port Authority to plot my next move. Try to get a shower a homeless shelter? Buy a room for the night at a dive hotel? I thought about going to a laundromat and washing my pants. But what would I cover myself with? And my legs would still stink, even in clean clothes. I did ask the laundromat manager if they could sell me some pants that maybe someone left behind. No dice. Should I call the cops? Kill myself? Wait till morning? And, and, and what? I called my brother who lives three hours away in Philly. He came and picked me up, two towels on his passenger seat, and drove me home. I put my clothes in a trash bag, including my leather shoes, the stink would never come out, and took a long hot shower. Worst day of my life. Stayed overnight at a friend's house a few years ago, middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. Woke up early the next morning, and was feeling a bit unsettled. 
I made my way to the bathroom, and decided to splash some water on my face to wake up a bit before I made myself at home. No water, nada, well was out. At this point, the critical point is yet to hit me, so I think I can wait a while. Stumbled to the kitchen, where my friend has just discovered a water shortage situation. Mind you, we're in the backwoods of Oklahoma, and it wouldn't be the first time I've ducked around a tree. So I'm still not understanding the gravity of the situation. My friend proposes to drive down the road to her grandmother's house, grab some jugs of water. I make plans to camp out in that bathroom. Grandma's house is a few miles down a bumpy dirt road, during which I start to feel more alarmed. Lower bowels are churning like I've swallowed a box of alka seltzer. I strongly encourage speed. Grandma's pump is out too, damn it Oklahoma. At this point, I realize the tree is gonna be my best option. I grab a spare roll of paper, and run for it, don't make it. By the time I barely exit the house, an explosive shit storm happens and I am covered in poo from the waist down, boots full too. So, I'm stripping in the backyard, behind a tree, begging for towels, idiot friend cannot stop laughing, so, covered in poo, no shower possible. Grandma lawns me a few towels, and I ride in the back of her stupid old farm truck down the road to the creek to wash off, while stupid friend goes back to her house to pick up my bag. I've got two, neither of which are actually mine, but they are still entertaining. My college roommate just finished eating some bad food at the dining hall and was walking to class. I guess something didn't sit right with him, and as he was walking he suddenly really had to shit. He tried to make it to class, but at some point he realized he wasn't going to make it. So he headed towards the library, which was the closest building with a bathroom. He couldn't run because if he did he'd poop himself, so he was doing the speed walk where you squeeze your butt cheeks together. Unfortunately, he pooped his pants before he could make it. This was an important class that he couldn't miss, so he went into the bathroom, cleaned himself as best as he could, threw out his boxers, and went to class with no underwear. My other friend from college brings home this girl one night, after they've gone to sleep. This kid poops himself in the bed. I'm not quite sure why or how, but it happened. He felt so embarrassed and he didn't know what to do. But luckily the girl was still asleep. He moved the girl ever so gently so that it looks like the turd came out of her butt. He then leaves to go to class and doesn't mention a word. These dorms are suites for four people, two rooms connected by a bathroom. Apparently, the suitimate said that the next morning when he was brushing his teeth, he heard the girl wake up and leave the room crying. Okay. So out drinking with buddies one night and I meet this girl, do some flirting and get her digits and proceed to head to several of the bars for a pretty epic night of meeting women and partying. Eventually the night winds down and I find myself heading out into the night on my own to return home in fairly unfamiliar territory. As I woke I suddenly realize the urge to shit is becoming unbearable. I'm walking through the city of Chicago and am somehow far from bars or restaurants or anywhere that would have a toilet and I realize I'm just not gonna make it. So, being that the night was over and my buddies had head home, I figured I'd just squat in an alley, drop a juice, and wipe with anything I could find. Well I wasn't really able to find anything sanitary to wipe with so I end up taking a rather messy shit and have to wipe with my hand. I proceed to wipe my shit covered hands on the ground and kinda laugh off the situation figuring I'll just go shower when I get home and chalk this one up to experience. But then, I get a text. Wanna hang out it's the girl I met earlier. This was around 4 a.m. or so and a clearer signal of booty call could not be made. I could no more turn down this call for late night less than Batman could ignore the bat signal. She tells me the bar she's at and I take a cab there, smelling like shit, shit on my hands, soaked in my boxers, with only a vague plan of how I'm gonna handle this. I arrive at the bar, knowing my first order of business is to bum rush the bathroom undetected by her. I successfully infiltrate the facilites and dispose of my boxers, they were unsalvageable. I wash my hands off and try to clean up as best I can. I leave the bathroom and find the girl wasted. As we chat it up I'm hoping I don't smell of shit. But to conclude my friends, I'll tell you I hit that Colombian ass from behind and I hit it good. I never had a girl I met the same night call out my name in bed and this Hispanic fixum was crying for me to give it to her by my name. It was epic. It was so good before I finished I blurted out I love you. Crazy as it was it turned her on even more. The next morning when I left I saw shit stains on my jeans and just laughed. Good times, good times. Walking home from school one night and I am literally two minutes from home and the safety of my own toilet when I literally get slammed by a feeling in my gut. I had to shit, and I had to shit now. 
I broke out into a half run in fear of the dam bursting there and then. I made it 10 steps when I just couldn't hold back anymore. I quickly whipped down my pants and took a really nasty runny shit right there within sight of my home. I was lucky there was no one around. It's a quiet street. I quickly looked around, pulled my pants up and run the rest of the way home with shit in my undies. I was traveling through northern Italy and southern France when I had to change trains at a tiny station in the mountains. While waiting, a massive poo came on, the kind you don't want to have anywhere but your own private restroom. I tried to hold it back but it was not willing to negotiate. I located a bathroom, and that's when I discovered the squat toilet. I had heard of them before but never seen one in person, let alone used one. This was not the time to learn. Unfortunately I didn't have a choice. I had to use my imagination a bit as I pulled down my pants and placed my feet where I thought they might be supposed to go. With what must have been a panicked and uncomfortable look on my face, I let loose. When the emergency was over, I looked down to check out the damage. A portion of the poop landed where I thought it was meant to go. The rest was on various parts of the absurd contraption that half the world considers a toilet. I wiped with some paper towels from the sink area and headed out to catch a train. I had to have a follow-up deuce on the train, which was a real relief. TLDR had to boo, found my first squat toilet. Three days before this incident took place, my boyfriend had just flown out to see me, and the day before we lost our virginity to each other. Anyway, we walked to the mall that was a block from where I lived to grab a bite to eat. The restaurant we choose is a really popular restaurant in the area where we lived, yummy fish tacos, and whatnot. As we are walking home, still in the parking lot, my stomach starts to feel a little weird. I've got some bad gas, so I tell my boyfriend we need to sit down at the edge of the parking lot. I'm sitting there, farting away, and then the unthinkable happens. I shit my pants. I look at my boyfriend for a second, and say, I just shit my pants. We call my mom to have her pick us up. She brings towels, and we begin the drive of shame. There were cops at the house. I get out of the car, with a towel wrapped around me, smelling like shit, and crying, run into the house to take a shower. The smell was horrible, the look from the cops and my mom was horrible. The not horrible thing is, he still loves me. I wrote this one down at the request of my family. It was pretty funny. This adventure begins with a long day at school. Like most days during my years of college, the overwhelming majority of my time was spent busting my sorry ass to get decent grades. As was custom, I got home with enough sunlight left to go for a run with my dad down at the Chattahoochee River National Park, in particular, the Soap Creek entrance to the trails. On this day, I got home from school probably around 4pm and got right to the good stuff an enormous glass of chocolate milk. I can't even begin to describe quite how amazing chocolate milk tastes when you're tired and thirsty. You'll probably disagree, but fuck off. It's amazing, and I was more than happy to pour my quart and a half of milk into a gigantic cup with ample Hershey's syrup in the bottom. I chucked that stuff straight down, probably an enormous smile on my face, and told my dad to give me 30 minutes to digest so I wouldn't feel sick on the run. At this point, you, the reader, are probably thinking, holy shit, how stupid are you 30 minutes isn't enough time. Well, reader, you can fuck off. It took me damn near three years to figure that out. Back to the story. I finished that cold delicious chocolate milk and patted my stomach with a smug sense of satisfaction sweeping through my body. God I was happy. I wish I could go back in time and take that cup away from myself. I would go back and literally slap the glass out of my hand, point an index finger, and in my serious voice say, number I was happy. But, fuck. I was stupid 5 o'clock rolls around and my dad and I are in the car on the way to the trail head, ready for a terrific run. So I thought, we decided we were both feeling pretty good, so we took the trails that led us to a 6 mile route. At the bottom of this loop, there are restroom facilities, facilities that I probably should have used. Around the third mile, I feel that familiar rumble, but it says hello, and then recedes back into the depths of my intestines. Odd, well, whatever, I'm probably fine right? While five begs to differ, around that fifth mile, oh so close to the car and sweet magical relief, my buddy sends me a very stern message. That message of course, is something along the lines of, holy shit, Sean, your brown babies are coming, and they are coming now, Christ, time to make a pit stop, dad, I have to stop, like, now-ish, well, I don't know what to tell you, try to find a bush or something, I'll just hang out at the trail, great. Awesome. At this point I'm pretty convinced I will be shitting myself if something doesn't happen very quickly. So I made a mad dash for a little ravine left over from a creek that had since dried up. 
This ravine is about 50 yards off the trail and somewhat out of sight, but if one were to look, it would it be hard to see the guy with his shorts and his ankles grimacing his brown margarita shoot out his ass. The day, no one was around and I finished my business and wiped up with some big soft kazoo leaves that one year I and got back on my way, is what I wish would have happened. No, not the day, that day happened to be the day a guy with a dog walked around the bend right as I was really getting down to business. Did I mention this dog was not wearing his leash? This dog had no such leash. I'm down there praying to a god I don't even believe in that this dog has no sense of smell, and as if to say fuck you, Sean. I'm real and I'm super pissed at you this dog could smell. Well, Rover, I hope you're happy. You came down to say hello to me while I was busy making a horrifying mess on the ground beneath me. So there I am, looking up at some guy on the trail trying desperately to be discreet about calling his dog away from the kid with his pants at his ankles, shitting in the woods. Was this the best day of my life? I moved that yes, yes it was. Thanks for laughing, Dad. I was waiting outside a bathroom, in a boiler room, in an apartment building, in Harlem. Some enormous black dude had just finished the apocalypse and I was next. After waiting 30 minutes with a prairie dog popping out of my ass, I ran in, almost passed out from the lack of oxygen, sat down and pissed out of my ass for about 20 minutes. Finally upon completion, I reach over for some TP and there's nothing there. I'm looking around and there's nothing in this bathroom. Just for perspective, this is one of those toilet-only bathrooms, the sink is outside in the locker room, so now I'm going crazy, no TP, no sink, nothing. All I could find stuffed behind the toilet was a matchbook I wish I had found earlier to cover the foul smell. It's all I had available so I tried to wipe my ass with a matchbook, it didn't work. I got about two good scoops and there wasn't a clean space left. I tried using my hands and that just ended up smearing shit all over my hairy bung. At that point I gave up pulled my pants up with my shit-covered hands, and walked out of the bathroom very carefully, legs stiff as to not rub my cheeks together. I called my boss and said I was sick and had to go home, about one hour drive east, got home, showered, rubbed a whole bottle of sanitizer on my hands, then had a hot dog, I specifically remember it was a hot dog cause I wanted to eat it with a fork and knife which is harder than it sounds. My anxiety used to be so bad that it caused me to have episodes of vibes. At the time this was going on, I was driving back and forth between Auburn, Alabama and Mobile, Mobile, not Mobile, on an almost weekly basis to visit my then girlfriend who was going to college in Auburn. One weekend on the way back, I was on a long stretch of interstate when the pain hit. I was more than eager for relief before things got too nasty. I once had blurred vision and knocked over a shelf in a gas station, on separate occasions, as a result of the pain. Thankfully, I found a rest stop no more than 20 miles or so after it started. I pulled in as quickly as I could in and ran to the bathroom where I was about to unleash fury upon the toilet. The place was, thankfully, desolate, as I have pooping anxiety as well, and I just hurriedly chose the first stall as a default. No more than 10 minutes in, I hear the door creak open. Oh, God, I say to myself. The offender is obviously a semi-truck driver with a hefty redneck belly, no doubt as a result of one too many Wendy's burgers, I can tell by his heavy breathing. My hopes of him using the urinal or one of the last stalls were shattered as I watched his workbooks pass in front of my stall and decisively into the one right beside me. Why not further down? I plead to myself as if he'll somehow sympathize. At this point, I can't shit anymore. I'm too terrified to make a sound. Why? I don't know. Don't ask me to explain my anxiety of others hearing me shit. It's normal, I think. His labored breathing continues as my brain makes note of every fucking horrible sliding sound and pneumatic push of his intestines. I can clearly hear his sticky logs sliding out of his ass as he grunts, dropping with a large splash into the toilet, and of course the ever familiar sound of suction as his anus queefs out each turd. The image of shit coming out of two flabby, white, hairy cheeks still haunts me to this day as if I had seen it. He sighs with relief and starts the grunting again. It's disgusting, awkward, and the smell was unbearable. I just sit there in pain for another 10 minutes or so as the grunting cycles continue and wait for him to leave. He finally gets up and leaves without washing his hands. Gross, as I have a nervous laugh at myself and I continue with one of the nastiest shits I've ever taken. I finish up and wash my hands, and while I'm drying, I saw that someone else was in one of the stalls further down that I hadn't noticed before. I got the sinking feeling that I walked in on someone, like me, with shitting anxiety as I hadn't heard any sound from them. Not only that, 
but the poor guy had to sit through two horrible sounding shits, the latter riddled with my small chuckles of relief followed by a flood of diarrhea from hell, tldr, awkward rest stop shit by fat trucker, even more awkward when someone unnoticed in the bathroom hears my noises. Chapter 1, The Shit I was driving my wife's car home from New Orleans alone and charted while going down I-10. I had painful gas for the past 30-40 miles, just strained a little too hard, and some shit slipped out. Chapter 2, What to do? I wasn't sure how bad it was, I didn't want to check because of the potential of smearing shit on the seat, steering wheel, etc. I knew I could not drive the remaining hour and a half home sitting in shit. I had to stop. I was torn as to which sort of gas station to stop at, and asked he one that would disgust me, or a nice one that I may skank up. I opted for one that was somewhere in between. Chapter 3, The Assessment. I waddled into a one-stall one urinal restroom, entered the stall, unzipped, anchored my pants and underwear, and sat to survey the damage, not as bad as it could have been. Underwear was fucked up, but minimal soiling of jeans. Chapter 4, The Visitor. I was about to unshoe and discard the problem when someone came in and seemed to be waiting for the stole. Chapter 5, Stealth Disposal, Poor Gas Station Attendant. I didn't want it to be evident what I was doing out of shame, so I took out my pocket knife and very quietly cut off my own underwear. I masked the cutting noise by pseudo grunts as a fake to shit. No way in hell was I pocketing them or carrying them out in my hand. I thought it would fuck up the toilet to flush them or stash them inside the tank. I thought sandwiching them between the tank and the wall was the most responsible answer so that's what I did. I wiped up, flushed, pulled up my pants, walked out, and gave a shitter in waiting a nod as I passed him on my way to the sink. I walked out of that restroom commando style, feeling that I'd done the best I could with a literally shitty situation, but at the same time marred in guilt over six slippery present I'd left for other patrons to smell and the attended to clean. Not really that embarrassing since you fine reddit folk are the only people that know. A friend of mine goes out to the bar, gets absolutely hammered, and ends up hooking up with some girl at her house. They both pass out immediately after sex, naked. A few hours later, friend wakes up and realizes that he shit the bed. So, he does what any other total genius would do, takes some of the shit and wipes it on her butt crack, heads to the bathroom to clean up, and then gets the hell out of there before she can wake up, making it look like she was the one responsible for the bed shitting. Edit. Looks like whoever told this to me may have stolen the story from somewhere else, as pointed out in the comments below. I certainly didn't mean to fake anything, just a story that was told to me long ago by a, possibly lying, friend, alas, still a good story, if it did actually happen to somebody, and if not, definitely something to remember for the future. On a flight from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, I hadn't pooped for a week and decided to drink a liter of prune juice so I'd shit before my flight. I drink it and nothing happens. Then an hour into the flight I feel an explosion in my stomach, so explosive that if I were to try to hold it for more than a minute I would literally shit myself, no joke. So I run to the toilet and thank god it isn't occupied and I just let steam. But since I hadn't pooped anything for a week there was a loot of stuff that needed to come out. So I stayed in there for at least an hour and I heard outside there was a big queue and people were hilting the door and yelling and very pissed and poor me sitting there with awful stomach cramps so bad that if I were to get out before I could empty my stomach then I would shit myself in the seat. Then the beating continues to the point where the people start trying to open the door because they thought I'd probably died in there. That was the most horrible part when I had to cling on to the door for dear life with angry pedestrians trying to break in. God that whole flight was a surreal nightmare but looking back it's a fun story to tell. The band was playing a gig in a crappy dive bar just outside of Kansas City. I had been surviving on a diet of gas station sandwiches, McDonald's and PPI for about two weeks. We load and undo the sound check, everything is ready to go. When I get the urge, I check the bar's bathroom, and true to form, there is just one urinal, a toilet, and a door that doesn't look. The drummer and I usually were willing to stand guard for each other in situations like this, but he had just sat down to eat the free food from the bar, and after a week or two of eating crappy food, I couldn't interrupt. Across the parking lot was a McDonald's, so I made a break for it. On the walk across the tarmac, I have the grumpy tummy going full bore. I have to be on stage in 20 minutes, I simply don't have the time to shit myself. I cut past the playground, and to the back where the bathrooms are through the door, into the stall, only to find a toilet that looks like it's already clogged, murky brown water, and even though it's only six inches deep, you can't see the bottom, I don't have a choice, 
drop the pants, and was almost done by the time the butt hits the porcelain. I'm sitting grunting and groaning, and the stall door rattles. Be right out, I say in the voice of someone obviously shitting so hard my toenails are getting shorter. I do the triple wipe, and out of habit, hit the flush handle. Fuck, here comes the shit to fall. Everything I just left, and everything that was already there when I got there comes flowing over the top. It's making the wet floppy sounds of fresh turds falling overboard. I get the pants back on, and open the stall door, avoiding eye contact. I let the waiting guy know that the toilet is clogged. I know, he says, and I looked up to the saddest McDonald's employee I have ever seen. I looked to his face, and then to the plunger in his hand, and just said I'm so sorry, and walked out. I was out hitting some range balls when I got a powerful urge to take a dump. However, the driving range had no bathroom. I leave my clubs there and hop in my truck and floor it to a gas stop about a mile away. I run in trying to maintain a sense of normalcy but any sharp-eyed human would easily know that I was about to explode. I make it to the PR and both stalls are taken so I wait about 10 seconds before deciding to drop a juice in the urinal. I do my business, listening to the guys in the stalls laugh as they realize what I'm doing and wipe with a few hand towels but just as I'm pulling up my pants a dad and his son walk in and see what I've done, my face was red as fuck and clearly the son would need a father-son chat after that. I booked it out of there no knowing what else to do, grabbed my golf clubs and made a shameful trip home listening to Rems everyone hurts a few times. I was in college and living off campus, I waited until I had no more clothes to do my laundry, and someone in my quadplex was using our machine, so, I drove all my clothes to the laundromat a few blocks away, I had just moved everything to the dryer when I felt the first pangs of something foul happening in the lower region of my alimentary canal, however, I focused on my happy place and it went away, oh, I should mention there was no bathroom at the laundromat and no other public places within quick walking distance. My clothes were probably about done in the dryer when the feeling returned. I ran to the dryer and started heaping clothes out of it into a basket to transfer into my laundry bags. It then hit me that I needed to leave at that moment. I yelled at some woman who happened to be next to me and asked if she would watch my stuff. I don't even know if she answered. I just ran out. As I got to the car, I realized inmates were already escaping from the fudge dungeon. I drove back to my house, unable to stem the tide. Fortunately, no neighbors were around so I was able to run upstairs unimpeded. I stripped down and took a dump that knocked the breath from my lungs. Then I took a quick shower. It was then that I realized that all my clean clothes were back at the laundromat, and I would have to wear the underwear and shorts covered in doo-doo butter to retrieve my clean clothes. I walked into the laundromat and made eye contact with no one. They all must have known from the smell what had happened. I retrieved my clothes and left, walking into the sunset never to return. Thanks for watching. Please give a like if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe if you want to see more. See you later.